<clears throat> All right, what we're going to be doing is testing some flatline projectiles. These are for 308 and these are 180 grainers. Um, what I'm going to do right now is just sort of spec them out, see how consistent they are, compare them to each other for one, and then I'm going to compare the consistency of, for instance, <coughs> the overall length. So let's measure the overall length first. And what we got is 1.614. And that is a long 308 bullet for 180 grainer. Surprisingly, um, I calculated what the twist rate should be. And these will stabilize according to the calculations they'll stabilize up to a 10.8 twist barrel so they should easily stabilize in a 10 twist barrel um, so we got 180 grainer <coughs> let's compare that length real quick to a burger 210 grainer okay um, and the, the ballistic coefficient of these is G7 of 0.351 equivalent G1BC is uh, 0.685 so I got a really high BC mostly because of the length so we got a 210 grain burger so the length of these are 1.614 that is one, two, three, one point four six one. Okay. So they're quite the hundred and eighty grainers are quite a bit longer than even a two hundred and ten grain. Let me grab another one. Their BC is point six two five. So a higher BC than a two hundred and ten grain burger. other one measures overall length of 1.472 okay so there's a <coughs> over a ten thousandths let's just call it ten thousandths variation in overall length um, most would say that's not a big deal but what you're stabilizing with your gyroscopic stability the twist rate of your barrel is more specifically the length of the bullet so the longer the bullet the faster you gotta spin it in order to stabilize it so we got a very just in two samples we got a variation of ten thousandths that's not to say anything bad about burger burgers are great I love them <clears throat> what I am pointing out is the consistency of a lathe turned solid okay so we got our second sample of the Warner Tool Company flatline bullets 1.614 third sample start to get bored when they're all the same 1.614 fourth sample 1.614 so, like I say, we're going to get bored measuring every single one of them. They're all the same, right? But that's what we want. That's exactly what we want. And then actually, now let's compare that to something of a similar weight. <coughs> um, Sierra 308 175 grain TMKs. I really like tipped bullets because very often the overall length is very consistent so <clears throat> the overall length if it's all the same 
1.370 means that the stability um, let's, how do we, the drag of each one should be very consistent. Okay, that's the same because the length of each projectile being the same means that the drag should be the same if the shape of course is the same. So the Sierra is being tipped the tip is obviously very consistent in length also. Okay, that one varied by did it? Did it vary? No, it didn't even vary. No, okay. So these are all the same at 1.370. That is excellent. Okay. So secondly, what I like to do is measure the consistency of where the ogive starts. So let's call this length to ogive. Okay. I'm measuring with a comparator. So right there that is 1.656 for this year. 1 1.656 1.655 5. very close. One point oops point six five seven. So these Sierras are also great. Sierras are a really good bullet. Um, okay, that one went way down. Way down. Three thousands down. But there's variation. You're seeing a variation. So the variation will cause some inconsistency, very slight. I mean, I don't even know if it would result in an inch variation of vertical at, let's say, 600 yards, but there's some variation. So now let's measure the lathe turned solids. We got 1.7. Well, that 1.739. Okay. It's actually 1.78 and a half. I really like <clears throat> the accuracy of these brown and sharps. There's a little spot in between every thousandth that you can resolve. Even a half a thousandth. Okay, we got one very one thousandth variation on that one. 1.738. So the length to ogive is within one thousandth of an inch on this sample. 0.738 and a half again. So all I'm really showing is there's a difference in <clears throat> let's say what you spend in quality. There's a difference in quality for the price of bullets. There's a reason that lathe turned solids are expensive. One of them is the consistency. Um, and that's really what we want for accuracy, precision, long range shooting. We want to reduce vertical dispersion as much as possible. So I'm going to load some of these up and we'll do some testing. Hello ladies and gentlemen. So what we got today is a custom 308 Winchester uh, I believe it's a Daniel Defense chassis. Got a Kales 6 to 24 scope. Very nice scope with left side windage. Um, 
and I got a target set up 100 yards out right there can't see it yet it's very focused but I will focus it in a minute anyways so what I'm doing is conducting a ladder test with some 180 grain Warner Tool Company solids so I already worked up from 44 grains um, and ran out of daylight yesterday so anyway I worked up to 46 so we're gonna start at 46 grains again and this is with CFE 223 powder supposedly uh, you get really good velocities in a 308 with CFE so the ladder test is just gonna be two so shots each 46, 46 and a half etc up to 47 and a half grains and since this scope has just been put on I'm also going to be zeroing it as I'm shooting so I might not even hit the box on the first shot but uh, we will see so stand by all right just got the camera set up and when you get in position load up start with 46 grains of CFE Alright, right off the bat, I'm going to aim dead center in the box and see where my hit goes first. Firing. Seen it? Alright. So before I adjust my scope, because it might actually group, I'm just going to let it keep going there and then I'm going to adjust my scope after the second shot of the same load. Shut up. Approximately... Four point six mils left. So I'm going to aim point six mils right. All right. will be 47 grains CFB 223 and so far bolt extraction is nice I don't feel a tight bolt the primers look still nice and um, not flattened yet all right so firing Uh, 875 yards and we're testing again to repeat the uh, 180 grain one or two company solid with 47 grains of CFE 223 um, theoretically according to the ballistics should be 6.1 mils of elevation so that's what I'm going to dial in first and see if we can spot it
Left side of the water line, there's a black, there's a black rock. I'm gonna aim at the right side white area. Firing. <coughs> Didn't see it. Spot. And then follow the diagonal crack up about the center of the water line and there's a dark spot. I'll let you know when I hit it. Firing. But then Cancel that, and I'm going to reposition the camera at 730 yards. I only seen one hit, and again, we got a bunch of clouds obscuring our sunlight. So, stand by for a second. Let me get positioned in. wasting ammo so anyway this is 46.8 grains and I'm dialed up four and a half mils and I know it's fuzzy but there's a a black spot above a bush and to the right of a bush and you'll see it once I shoot at it It is one mil right of the bush, and two mils high of the lower bush. Firing. And that went right and a little high. That was 46.8. I'll try 47. It's the last shot, so do what we can until you know, daylight runs out. Same spot. Firing. Was good. You know, I'm liking 47 a lot. So, 
all that good. All right, right there is 730. And you'll see a definite black area sort of in the middle of the opening. Um, so that's what I'll be aiming near that. Just a second. with the last few shots. I'm trying a different primer just to see what it does. And a shot with a Remington nine and a half. Shot is around to nine and a half. Just uh, left 1.2 mils and a little high, so I'm coming down two tenths. Firing. Federal 210 primer. <clears throat> Main thing I want to see is if there's any vertical dispersion from changing primers, and then after I fire a couple shots with the 210, I'm going to go back to a CCI 200 and then check the vertical dispersion and compare the three. Tenth. So it looks like. Let me check your camera. Okay, good. Um, it looks like those two primers with that load are within a tenth of a mil. So that's good. One more shot.
Same spot, Sam. Alright. Let's see. Hmm. One point. I'm at four point three elevation at seven hundred and thirty yards. So it looks like it's going a little faster than I thought. Okay, we're going to try it again at nine, or 875 now that I'm more dialed in, so um, according to <coughs> the ballistics app, I should be 5.8 elevation, so I was trying 6.3 before, and I might have been overshooting, obviously I was at least a mil right also before, so stand by and get on the, get on the gun. Federal intent primer. That crack just below the can area of the water line. Firing. Um, that was looked dead on. Exactly. There's a little white spot right there where I was aiming. So that was pretty darn good and that's showing me that the dope chart is coinciding with the trajectory according to that velocity which was 28.20 feet per second. I'm going to fire one more shot into that spot. Uh, yeah, nice. Same spot. It's the same spot, Sam. It's the same spot, Sam. Right where I was aiming. I mean, within a tenth of a mil. So it's really hard for me to call within a tenth of a mil through the scope as the recoil is happening. So that's why I'm filming so I can review it and see if that was. Um, it, what the camera is nice that shows is a lot of times it looks like you hit exactly where you're aiming but the bullet splash ricochets either upward or downward and it looks like you hit but you could be six inches off so anyway we're gonna review that and verify have a nice day